you know yesterday was Friday. Everyone's focused on the 530-point drop on the stock market. Yeah. But not realizing yesterday that over $12 billion was exchanged mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. between the United States by illegal immigrants, mm-hmm. sending their money back to their rich, uh, mm-hmm. respective countries. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when you, when, when you go to these countries, namely south of the border or over in uh, East uh, Asia or even in Africa, most of the banks in those countries, in these towns, in these capitals, are about the size of a walk-in closet. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. but they move so much money. Mm-hmm. Twelve. We're talking. We're talking twelve billion dollars a week. Is it, it, when people get paid. They they're in our underground economy. This is in another reason that liberals want this is because they can tax it. Yeah. They've put so many Americans out of work mm-hmm. that it can, now they're saying, "Okay, well, if we bring these people out of the shadow, out of the shadow, out of into, out of the shadows, mm-hmm. and give them uh, uh, de facto citizenship. Then they're they're already in the economy, so they can pay in the social security." Uh, no, they're not. Mm-hmm. Most of them, most of them and their families are getting some form of social service. Okay. Yes, exactly. So right. what little what little you get back, the twenty five cents you get back, you're paying out a dollar. Well, that's the question that I have. Who is the beneficiary of that money that is being sent back to these uh, countries of origin? Because the only person that I see that really benefits out of this is the Democrat Party in the voting booth. But but you said who really benefits? Yeah. The people we are working. Yeah. Okay, the mm-hmm. w- the way they benefit, most of them have no intention of staying. Mm-hmm. Most of them, if you if you work in an industry like I do construction, mm-hmm. most of these young, most of these people come here. They, they're cheap labor, but they know that for every American dollar, they're going to get about seventeen to thirty dollars back at home. Yes. Well, okay, I, good exchange you know, rate. Well, so that, they come here, they work for five years. On a working visa or in the underground economy, yeah. and when get this gets close to them, to, to they leave. Yeah, they leave. Now they, they have. Uh, they also have in these border towns. They have day to day working oh, permits work, and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, and, and, right, and no, no, we're, we're not talking about your average day work. Uh huh. We're not talking about your average day labor. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. We're talking about people who can do everything from operate a backhoe mm-hmm. to uh, a steamroller, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. They come here with a five, ten-year plan. Mm-hmm. They're only staying five to ten years mm-hmm. because the, the longer they stay, the, it's gonna be, the easier they're going to easier for them to be caught, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. Because you start letting your defenses down. So they stay here for five to ten years. They work in our economy. They don't pay any taxes. They send their money home, and then they just, and in five, ten years, they self-deport. They go home, and they pay a percentage of taxes back home, whether it be Nicaragua, whether it be Guatemala, whether it be Thailand, whether it be Senegal. They pay a percentage and keep a bulk of their money. Hmm. This is why these people are coming to the United States. They're not coming here because they're poor, destitute. Hmm. They have a plan. Yeah, well, they, they, they know... They know if they stay at home, they're going to be dirt poor. Yeah, and uh, the 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 uh, the people that are defending the, the the policy that we currently have, they continue to make it out as if these people are clamoring to be citizens of this country, <laughs> and that and that's just not the case. Be, but and the thing about it is that they're changing our culture for the worst. Our government is changing because it's becoming more socialist. Yes. And the yeah. laws are more oppressive, mm-hmm. and the people that are are being hurt by all of this are the minorities in the cities like Detroit, like uh, all across Washington D.C., yeah. Washington, yeah. Baltimore, and, Baltimore, yeah, the ones that's raising up right now, and you know, uh, and saying I, that they want jobs. And I believe that we've been sold out by our own race. We we have been we have been sold and at, at this point it's not even selling out anymore. Mm-hmm. It's it's go along to get along. Yeah. Okay. If you look at if you look at the last six years, what have what have African Americans gained? 
<laughs> they've gained a, 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 a very prominent role on the on the welfare rolls. A very p prominent. They, mm -hmm. There's a big, big jump in food stamps in uh, all of the social programs. And, uh, but but and, what I'm saying is, and, 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 what have, when, when you say, when I say gain, what have African Americans politically gained in the last six years? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But they've gained uh, more, uh, more on the welfare rolls. And, 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 and that's the thing that when we go back and look at the results of the 14th Amendment, it was to, uh, to, 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 uh, to help the, the, uh, the former slaves assimilate. And, and what happens? Look at all of the casinos that are across this country, the gaming act, the gaming industry. That's all controlled by, guess what, Indian, Indians. Yes. And, and, and when you think about it, the, uh, the three casinos here in Detroit were originally considered to be billion dollar assets had been that that is doubled and maybe tripled and and the thing is that the the uh the indians were ex excluded intentionally excluded from the 14th amendment because they were in uh insurrection against this government they were in at active war with the government so they were not under the jurisdiction of the United States, and they were excluded, and yet and still, and they have sovereign, their own sovereignty. Yes, yeah, they, they, they have their own nation within yes. the nation. There is a very obscure act that most people don't know. It's called the Indigenous People yes, Act. Yes, yes. And it, 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 in uh, Canada, well, Mexico, really doesn't. Uh, well, the United States and Canada both abide by it. Yeah. And basically what it says is people who were here prior to Christopher Columbus, mm -hmm. come and go, they went back to 1492, they said these people have the right to have their own nation within a nation. Yeah. They're not bound by any borders. They can cross... Uh, well, they it's, that, it's in New York. There's a tribe that lives in New York and one that lives uh, across the border in Canada. Yeah, the, you cannot legally stop them from crossing the border. You can't because that seems as their indigenous homeland. Well, so they, they, but you know are they are move, what they are subject huh? to is the Reservation Act, and that's that, that that's another thing. But 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 it doesn't bother their their uh, sovereignty. Uh, no. And the thing is that what they keep telling us is that uh, that that uh, the 14th Amendment can't be changed to stop all of this anchor baby nonsense and all of this uh, this open borders. It only takes the Congress to do their job. And that's what we as citizens have to do is do our job and elect the correct people. And we need to start with us because we are the ones that are that uh, that w that the 14th Amendment was supposed to effect mm -hmm. and help instead of what everybody else gets. The in Indians get sovereignty and get to, to, to be able to create industry because they have their own sovereign territory. They can make their rules and their laws as they see fit as long as it's, uh, it's not you know, in contradiction to the government. But what do we have? We have blacks in ghettos across the country, and we can't even say that we, we can control that area because we've, had, we've elected people on the basis of skin color and allowed them to tell us that this is good for us. In, uh, Most social programs. Yeah. yeah. And uh, instead, of, instead of enterprise, they give us social programs. Yeah. Well, well, you know, the, the thing they always say is, well, you know, those social programs are part of our reparations. No, those social programs will keep us enslaved. Uh, enslaved. <laughs> enslaved. And, and, and it is enslaved. It's just probation from slavery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all it is. We get to go home at night instead of staying on the plantation. Yeah. You, 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 you basically, he's right. You basically do. I said that myself. I said we traded one form of slavery for another. <laughs> yeah. well, Kevin, listen, we are down to our last two minutes in here. We, you, we have got to get together and collaborate because you say that you're an old construction worker. I'm an old construction worker. And uh, listen, we've got to get uh, and, and, and get a direction that we need to go to and, uh, and, 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 and do that. I mean, because our leadership in this country has solely led us down in the black uh, 
black uh, ghettos across the country because mm -hmm. there we course. have we have many many resources and we're not putting them to we're not to, really to putting use. them to use. Yeah, you're right. Creating creating the next millionaire, creating the next uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, and so on and so forth. You know, here let me just say this right here. You know, um, we have a lady that wrote an article here, in Detroit, uh, uh, Rachel uh, Rowley. We got about a minute. But, you know, Julian Bond uh, died earlier d this week, and, uh, you know, she called him an icon. You know, whenever I heard Julian Bond with that filth that came out of his mouth, man, <laughs> it, it I thought it was just, just despicable. Well, well I'm, 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 I, I, don't, I never speak de ill of the dead. I yeah. don't. It's just not me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'll say this much. Even a plain painted clock is right twice a day. Yes, it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. My, yeah. That, that's one of my favorite sayings for the military. There you a go. painted clock is right twice a day. Yeah, and he was always on the wrong time. He was the ninety-eight percent of the time. He was on he the was wrong on time. the wrong side of Ke everything. Ke Thank you very Ke much, Kevin. You got to get back with us. Um, uh, uh, give us some of your quick information, and um, we we, we, we'll minute. set up a, another program as soon as possible. No problem. Uh, give give us uh, your quick uh, information. Oh, that my people... information. Oh, yeah. I'm so sorry. Uh, you can reach me at www.project21.org, or you can call the office at area code 202-543-4110. Okay, so thank you. Can, you can we'll reach that... me at Twitter at K-V-L-M-A-R. All right. We'll thank give you. that information out. You can hear the music. We are on our way. <laughs> See you next week, folks. The Abolitionist Roundtable invites the WAM Talk 1600 listeners to continue the roundtable discussions by mailing correspondence to Art of Michigan, Post Office Box 135, Garden City, Michigan, 48135. Or follow Phil and Dell at artofmichigan.com. You can also send emails to artofmichigan at hotmail.com. And most of all, continue to listen every Saturday and tell a friend.